Hello, welcome to live streaming. Having some technical difficulties. I don't know why, but the camera decided not to work today. Uh, I'm going to be fiddling with it off and on. See if we can get something to come up. Uh, but uh, Chroma Cam seems to be just bombing out. It's more than likely something I configured wrong, I'm sure. Uh, but I, don't, I haven't messed with anything in a, like a week, so I'm not sure what it could be. Um, but anyway, that's not working right now. So you can see there on the screen, I'm sort of flashing it off and on, and nothing's really happening. And I don't know why. So we'll, ha we'll have to play with that a little bit. But welcome to episode 19, Live Coding with Matt Groves. I'm your host, Matt Groves. Today, we're going to be talking about some EF Core, we're continuing where we left off last time. But actually, in the last week, I've got a flood of pull requests that have come in on the project. So thank you, everyone, for those contributions. We're going to uh, go over them today, get through as many as we can. And we'll be uh, continuing to work on the EF Core provider for Couchbase. Uh, yeah, I know Calvin, the webcam is uh, having some technical difficulties. I don't know what's going on with it. I did already mention that. Um, I'm sure this won't be the last time I'm mentioning it. But I don't know what the problem is. And I'm already starting late. I'm kind of uh, behind already. So I, I thought, rather launch with no webcam than not launch. So uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do. If you have any suggestions, I'm open, open for it. I might just remove this and add it in. I don't know. We'll see you. Remove the camera and then I'll add it in in a second. Anyway, uh, the theme of this show, let me zoom in a little bit here, the, is the only stupid question is the one you don't ask. We do a lot of live coding on the show, a lot of stuff related to coding. Some of it's advanced, some of it's really simple, some of it's serious, some of it's fun. But at any time, feel free to ask a question about anything you see on the screen or anything else related to coding. Don't be afraid of asking a stupid question because that's the only one that is stupid is the one you don't ask. All right, I am with the uh, Live Coders team. So uh, I'm just completely disorganized this morning. Sorry about that, everybody. I uh, had to take my kids to an activity because uh, mom is not available this morning. So I'm running a little bit behind, but that's okay. Uh, I'm with Team Live Coders here. Uh, we are a team of live coders basically here on Twitch and we uh, are affiliates or partners and we encourage uh, chat room engagement and answering questions and these are all the people on the team right now that are on Twitch. Right now it's just myself and Code Phobia who are streaming. Lots of great people to check out here though. Uh, just yesterday I was checking out Dev Chatter. I've actually got a chance to check out his channel a few more times. That's, that's uh, uh, Brendan's channel, and he's doing some really interesting stuff with uh, Final Fantasy VII, um, kind of a chatbot interaction hacking thing, so pretty darn cool, uh, you can check that out. Uh, of course, uh, the Michael Jolly is on here, one of my favorites, Ed Charbonneau, and the founder is on here somewhere, the list is getting bigger and bigger. Brendan does awesome stuff, not that you don't, by the way. Brendan's been doing this a lot longer than I have, he's at episode 200 or whatever. So yeah, he's doing some awesome stuff. And he's probably a better coder than me, just in general. Um, C Sharp Fritz is sort of the head of this channel. Uh, obviously, he's he's a guy you should check out as well. Okay, so we got that out of the way. Check out the awesome developers streaming list. Similar sort of thing. This is a text file on a GitHub repo that lists a bunch of streamers. And it's been updated two days ago. So I like to go in here and search who's doing stuff with data, databases, because that's what I do on this uh, stream most of the time. I'm working with databases. I'm working with Couchbase, .NET, C Sharp, uh, a lot of back-end type stuff. I'm not much of the front-end JavaScript, make things look nice guy. Uh, so just see if there's any updates here. It looks like the usual suspects on this list. So nobody knew doing anything with databases, but definitely check this out. The great thing about this is you open this up in your browser, do a control F, and you can search for someone who's into Python, for instance, and you can tune into their stream if you want to learn more about Python uh, or what have you. So definitely check that out. That's github slash bnb slash awesome developer streams. Okay. I, all my videos, by the way, when I remember to, I post them over to YouTube, and uh, my audio doesn't sound quite right here. Let me just turn it up a little bit. There we go. 
Uh, and uh, you can watch the archives here on Twitch, of course, but you can also check out the, uh, the... Twitch holds them for like 30 days or something. So I make sure to export them all over to YouTube as well. And you can find those at bit.ly slash grovestube. You can drop a subscribe over there if you want to get notified of that. I also tend to uh, make uh, uh, highlight clips every once in a while, like shorter clips of the stream with something sort of self-contained and interesting, and I, I'll export those to Twitch and also to YouTube as well. So check it out, bit.ly slash grovestube. All right, the Twitch bot is running, and you can see it's already logging messages from Calvin. That's all it's doing right now is logging messages. We, we're storing lots and lots of messages. Anything that gets written to our chat room. Uh, goes into a couch based bucket and we can then query it and the only query I've been running so far is just to see who has the most chat messages uh, There's no prizes or anything for it yet. We're just just sort of gathering data We'll figure something out to do with it someday in the future But we're probably up to 500 plus messages stored in there at this point So just keep that in mind anything you chat will be saved and used against you in a court of law. No, just kidding uh, I'm not, I am uh, just storing it in my local computer no one else can get to it yet. All right. Yeah, okay, so I forgot about this. I actually, I had an email question come in. Someone knocking at the door? No, nope, I guess not. I had an email question come in. It was a question about Couchbase, and a, couch, a question about Couchbase and SignalR. So I thought I would address that here on the stream. I don't have anything to show just yet, but it might be something I could do in the future, or if anyone else watching wants to, is you know, has worked with SignalR, you want to, check this out and see if uh, I'm making any sense. Um, so his question was, he has, he has a data, data uh, two different programs. He has a data loading program, which puts data into a Couchbase bucket. And he has another program that's like an ASP.NET MVC app that shows, um, I forget what it was, like a leaderboard, let's say, or, or some, some sort of uh, user profile data to the, to the page. And, and he's looking at using SignalR, I think it's a he, it might be a she, I don't remember. Uh, this person is looking at using SignalR to update that uh, page uh, live as the user information changes. You want to update the scores or, or what have you. And so he said, is, is SignalR uh, the right approach to do that? Or, or is there something in Couchbase that can help me with that? And so SignalR is, it's basically a, a tool, and I'm not an expert, but I, I have used it long in the past, and, and uh, I have a basic understanding of what it does. It uses a couple different methods, um, most likely WebSockets or something like that, to create a persistent connection between a web page and uh, a server, a backend. Signal R is what they call it still, I think. Yeah. So you can find out more about it here in the Microsoft Docs site. So Signal R kind of is pushing data. Uh, from somewhere, from the back end to the front end, to the web page, without having to do a refresh, without having to do a, a poll. Uh, let me see if we can get that camera working now. Give it a video capture device, and we'll do that. And Well, I've got, I've got this guy working, but no, uh, no background removal. Yeah, so there I am. You can see my uh, all my couch base signs. So I got something working at least. Uh, let's move this down a little bit here. All right. I'm sneezing all morning. You're watching Matt Grove sneezes live here on Twitch. Honestly, I'd rather see you with a background than not see you. Oh, that's so sweet of you, Calvin. Uh, anyway, so SignalR, it, it, uh, it's, it's a, basically a way to kind of abstract some of those details to keep a persistent connection between a web page and a backend, which normally isn't the case. So he's on the right track, I think, uh, that it's, it's great for pushing data from the backend to the web page to refresh it live without having to, without having to do any sort of jQuery, you know, Ajax polling, without having the user having to hard refresh the page. So then his question was basically, okay, so once I got SignalR up and running, and this is, you know, he's, he's brand new to all this kind of stuff. So um, the next part of the equation was, okay, how do I get live updates from Couchbase into uh, SignalR, which will then push them out to the web page? And, and, and uh, you know, in his in case, he was asking about Couchbase because I do a lot of Couchbase videos. But this could also be the same for any other database as well. 
And you know, some databases have a, a kind of event stream that you can subscribe to. Couchbase actually has that, but it's a little difficult to work with as a as an end developer right now, and it's not something we document super well. It's all open source, of course. It's called DCP. Uh, but uh, we have we're, we're working on some other ways that make that more accessible. But so we don't have that right now, and and most databases don't have a sort of event stream that you can subscribe to. Uh, there are there are a few out there. Um, but not all of them. So the, the way you can do this is you can just have your, your back end, uh, whatever it is, in this case was ASP.NET MVC, a .NET back end. It's going to query Couchbase or whatever database is every so often. So this could be a background task, like what we did with uh, Hangfire, for instance. Um, or it could just be a console app that you know runs every five seconds or something. And so it's going to go out there and find those updated documents, those updated data. Whatever it is you want to show live, it's going to find that uh, information out, and then it's going to push that to SignalR, which I believe SignalR calls them hubs. So you're going to pull for data on the back end and, uh, and push it out through SignalR. So right now, there's nothing like a Couchbase event that you're, like an MVC app can subscribe to, and I think that's true for most databases. You can't, like, there's no SQL Server subscribe to events, uh, things like that. However, in Couchbase, there is something called an eventing service. So let's bring this up here, Couchbase Eventing Service. We're going to get to the Indie Framework stuff here real soon, so just hang in there. Uh, so this Eventing Service, and this is something that's relatively new to Couchbase. Um, and I don't know if there's a great example of it here. Just This is kind of marketing stuff, trying to get to like just a code example. Maybe look in the docs. And I've done this on the stream before as well. Uh, eventing Fundamentals, yeah, let's check this out. All right, so eventing and yeah, some use cases and stuff. Fine, is there trying to show adding a Couchbase function? Yeah. So what you do is you write a function. Uh, still not. Here we go. Examples. Uh, let's see, SQL Service. SQL Server has the service broker, which can push messages to endpoints. Okay. So that would be uh, one thing you could do in SQL Server, and that's something similar. To what I'm going to show here. I think we used the service broker, didn't we, Calvin? Is that, uh, is that what you're talking about when we work together? Because we were doing something very similar. We weren't using SignalR, but we were using something similar to update something. Uh, but anyway, yeah, okay, so here's an example. You can, you can write a, a JavaScript function in Couchbase that does something whenever a document is added or changed or deleted. Yes, and we've rewritten that since we service broker. Okay, so SQL service broker would be one thing you might want to look into for doing this kind of thing with, with SignalR. Uh, but with Couchbase, you can create a function, and this function will run whenever a, a document, a piece of data is updated or removed or added. And so within these functions, you can do a lot of different stuff. And one of the things you can do is actually make a call out to a URL using the curl command. So you can make a get or post request to curl, and I wrote a blog post on this recently, uh, very recently. In fact, this thing is maybe the most recent blog post I've written, or second most. And I use cheese curls for the graphic, of course. Uh, but uh, let's see if I have an example here. Okay, so here's an example. Uh, and I just did a really simple one that's going to make a call out to a weather service. Uh, so you, you, an on update method is what you write, and you do some logic or get some gather some data or what have you. And then my idea was you'd make a HTTP request to your ASP.NET MVC service. And that service would have an endpoint, which would then turn around and make a, uh, you know, make a push out to the hub, the SignalR hub. Uh, so it's a little bit extra work to do because Couchbase doesn't have a, um, a sort of event stream you can subscribe to yet. But so it kind of looks like this. And it, uh, not great graphic here, but uh, see if I can sort of yeah, here we go. So you start out with this loader, the data loader that's going to put data, it's going to save it into Couchbase. And then once it's saved, Couchbase is going to launch a Couchbase event. And that event is going to make an HTTP request to the MVC project endpoint, which is going to turn around and make a push or whatever it's called, an update to the SignalR hub, which will then end up on your web page. So this is kind of a, it's a little bit of a Rube Goldberg. Um, but I'm really the only extra step in here is kind of this part right here, right? If, if there is something you can subscribe to in Couchbase, which eventually I think there will be, 
no promises on that. Uh, you could sort of leave this out and have, have the MVC project subscribe directly to Couchbase, but we don't have that yet. But we can make a relatively simple service to listen for data that gets uh, modified and push it out to some endpoint. And then the endpoint we can then, you know, we can make that as generic or as specific as we want to. We can have one single endpoint where everything branches off. We can have multiple endpoints for different kinds of documents. That's, that's really a separate question. But that's kind of the, the process that I was thinking of for that kind of thing, where you have a loader project and you have an MVC project and they're separate things. And that's, that can be a very common scenario. That's like a microservice type scenario right there. So I thought I would throw that out there. I don't have any code examples to show yet. I'm, that may be something I, I take on in the future stream. But I wanted to get that out there to get some feedback and, and see if you think that's a reasonable process or not. So with Calvin's uh, Calvin's suggestion, instead of uh, instead of this couch-based stuff, you'd have SQL Server, which would then I think um, I don't remember if we used a trigger for that, but it would use uh, uh, or maybe it, maybe we skipped a trigger. But then you could this instead of couch-based event, you would have the SQL Service broker, which is something that I think is available in SQL Server. We're using 2012, 2016, I don't remember. But then the service broker itself, you, it wouldn't be an HTTP, HTTP request, but it would be the MVC project would listen to the service broker. And then it would push something on SignalR. So uh, we were using SQL dependency available in .NET to monitor a query, that's right. So there was a query, we would supply it, and it would monitor that query. So any uh, changes to the results in that query, that would cause the app to get notified. That's right. Uh, so a similar sort of thing that I'm talking about here. So instead of a query monitor, we, we have a couch-based event, which is kind of like that whenever, it could be like a query monitor, uh, but whenever a piece of data gets updated, it would execute. So, and I'm sure there's, there's similar things you can do in other databases and backends, but that's kind of the process I thought about. It's a little bit extra work, um, there's certain databases that already have the event stream available, so it's going to make it a little bit less work, but honestly not a ton difference. So I wouldn't hinge your database choice just on that, um, but it's something to, to think about. Okay, so that's something we could explore in the future if anyone's uh, interested in, in going down that road. And uh, I might make this a little highlight clip to share with that uh, person who emailed me. I, you know, I sent him all this information in the email, but I thought I would maybe just do a video clip of it as well. Okay, moving right along. We're going over to an EF Core. Back to our EF Core project. So, uh, let's see, where are we? Entity Framework is a .NET ORM. It's a popular .NET ORM uh, created by Microsoft. Entity Framework Core is one that was created for, uh, well, for, uh, kind of for .NET Core, I guess. Kind of for uh, .NET, um, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? .NET, .NET standard, that's what I'm looking for. And so Entity Framework Core uh, is a tool to interact with entities and store them and retrieve them in a database. Wait, that's what Matthew D. Groves looks like. I'm so surprised seeing him for the first time ever. Thanks for stopping in, Brandonius. We were just, uh, I was just plugging your, your dev chatter stream and and uh, talking about uh, how many, well, you're up to 200 some episodes at this point. And, uh, and uh, talking about Final Fantasy VII a little bit. And uh, Calvin was saying that you do some awesome stuff. And I agree with him. Um, 206 or something. Jeez. Oh, yeah, so definitely check out Dev Chatter on Twitch uh, for sure. Definitely subscribe to Dev Chatter. Thanks for dropping in, Brandonius. Uh, Entity Framework Core. Uh, so, you know, most people think Entity Framework, they think SQL Server, and that's very common, of course, but Entity Framework Core has a number of different providers. What is this little thing? Some sort of creature, oh, it's a, it's a platypus with a heart, okay. Thank you for that. <laughs> uh, so anyway, Entity Framework Core can uh, use a number of different providers to go through different databases. It doesn't have to be SQL Server only. So there's providers out there for Postgres, for MySQL, and there's one in preview right now for Cosmos DB, which is Microsoft's Azure NoSQL offering. And so what I decided to do is uh, to get the ball rolling on a Couchbase provider based on the Cosmos provider. Brendan says, doesn't really have to be a DB even. Well, that's true, I guess. You could entity framework to anything that you want to 
query or uh, retrieve or save data from. There might be an any framework provider for text files or um, web APIs, things like that. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Uh, so but anyway, so I decided to take the Cosmos uh, and the framework provider in preview, basically do a copy and paste of it. It's a good place to start because Couchbase and Cosmos have some things that are kind of in common. They're both storing JSON data. They both have a SQL query language. Um, Couchbase is a much more advanced query language, so it's going to be a lot more work for us to, to bite that part off. Calvin sending the gift to Brendan. Very nice of you, Calvin. Appreciate that. Calvin is up to three gift subs in the channel. Three. Calvin. Splashing, splashing around, making it rain in here. Very nice, Calvin. I appreciate that. So, uh, so yeah. So, anyway, that was a good place to start, but there's a lot of work to be done on that provider. Uh, that is bada bing, bada boom, Brendan. That is your, that is our custom emoji. So, Calvin and I, we used to work together, and uh, we we pair program a lot. And whenever uh, Calvin uh, or I achieve something, uh, made a test pass or what have you, Calvin's catchphrase was bada bing, bada boom. Uh, so uh, I thought, why not make that an emoji with Calvin's glorious smiling face? <laughs> bada bing, bada boom. All right. So uh, anyway, that being said, over the holiday weekend, it was a long weekend for me, by the way, four days. I had a number of pull requests and uh, follow-ups on pull requests come in. So I thought we would take some time to check those out and see what's going on. Now, most of these come from uh, Brant Burnett, who uh, I don't think he's dropped in on Twitch stream yet, but he is uh, a big deal in open source. Uh, he has worked on a lot of the .NET related Couchbase projects. So he's the one of the main contributors to a project called Link to Couchbase, which is a link provider for Couchbase which is very nice. Uh, he's also done a number of other Couchbase extensions for ASP.NET, ASP.NET Core. Uh, he's also dabbled in some Node, so it's like an index manager that he wrote in Node. And uh, he does a ton of stuff with open source and Couchbase and, and other technologies. And he is one of our most active community members. So having him submit uh, looks like five, uh, four, four pull requests is a real treat. So I really appreciate that. I want to give him a shout. Uh, but the first one here is by our very own Calvin Allen. So uh, he submitted some pull requests that I reviewed last time. One of them I uh, tested it out and merged it, no problem. The other one had an issue with it, and I can't remember what it was. Um, but I sent him some feedback on the issue. Um, maybe I closed it, I don't know. Uh, Calvin requested review from M. Groves. I thought I left him a comment somewhere. So we can go to our GitHub project board. Yes, that's right. So we have two project boards. One is called Low Hanging Fruit. One of them is called Link. Uh, Low Hanging Fruit is this stuff that's, I don't want to say easy, but uh, relatively small amount of effort, um, relatively small scope compared to the other board, which I've just called Link, which is the huge thing. Um, Replace item. So this is what was, this is the issue right here. All right. So what I, I put a couple of cards on here for um, re updating an item, replacing an item in the database, and deleting an item. And uh, one of the things that the Cosmos provider does, and and this is something we may want to change down the line, but may not be a problem right now, is so in in Cosmos DB, the document ID, the key, if you will, is stored right in the document itself. So let me just give you an example here. So here's a Cosmos document. It looks, it's JSON, and it kind of looks like this. So it uh, has a key like that, and then it has some fields in it like mat and uh, shoe size and so on, right? Etc. So it's, it's JSON. Now, in a Couchbase document, it's very similar. So we can copy and paste most of this, except that the key is not in the document itself. The key is actually outside in the metadata, and so it would be a key of my key. Okay? So that's one of the key, so to speak, differences between Cosmos and Couchbase. 
So the Cosmos provider that I copied and pasted, you know, when we define a class, and I can actually bring this up here in Visual Studio while I'm talking about it. When we define a class, we, pro we put an attribute on it called, called key. Uh, and so that tells Entity Framework what object property to look at to get the key for the document. So then what, what it does, because it's the Cosmos provider, it'll actually create a field called ID in the JSON that's going to save and just sort of shove that in there before it saves it. Well, in Couchbase, we don't want that. So at some point, we may want to go deeper into the code and strip out the part where it shoves the ID in there. But what, we, what we're doing right now is right before we save to Couchbase, I'm just going through that document and examining it, stripping out that ID field because we already have it as the key in the document. So Calvin's uh, pull request last week was to replace a document, and it worked fine, except that it ended up with the ID field in here which again is not the end of the world. In some cases, you may want that to actually happen. You may want to store the ID here and here. It depends on your use case. But for the, for the most part, I don't want that to be the default behavior. So then I suggested, oh, Calvin, here's some code that I use to strip out the ID field. Maybe you could check that out and possibly refactor because it's the same piece of code used in two places there. So what Calvin did, I believe, is that exact thing. So he refactored. Uh, the replace um, item, replace item once async method, which is uh, somewhere around here. Uh, so this is the Couchbase client wrapper. Can we view the whole thing? Uh, replace once, replace item once async. Yes. Okay. So there's a couple different overloads here. Some of them are private, some of them are public. Um, replace item. So what he's done is he's created this method called strip ID from document. And then this part here is what he did last time, which was just a simple call to the couchbase.net SDK to replace an item with the async method. This is the actual key, and here's the actual document. So then I want to review the strip ID from document, which he also uh, refactored the create item method to use strip ID from document. And so then here's the method he created. It's a private uh, method, a private static method. Takes in a J token and returns a J token and then just looks to see, is there an ID field? And if so, we're gonna remove it. So, you know, going forward, this may be tricky for anyone who is, who wants to use an ID field in their Couchbase documents and, um, you know, that, that doesn't seem like a great design for me. It could be confusing, uh, but it's possible. That being said, I think it is good enough for now. It is, it's just your code, by the way. I didn't change that. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, you just took this code that I wrote and I put it in another method and you refactored it to, a, to its own method. Um, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> this code that I wrote early on, that may be problematic going somewhere down the road if there is some weird use case out there where someone wants to store an ID field in the document as well as uh, the actual key. Like, that would be a weird situation for me, but not, in, you know, not unthinkable. So that may be a problem down the road, but we're going to punt on that for now uh, because we don't even have a completely working entity framework provider yet. So uh, let's get it working first. MVP, as they say, minimum viable product, and then we, we can iterate from there. And who knows, maybe some of the pull requests from uh, Brandt deal with this. We haven't looked at them yet. So anyway, let's go over to Calvin's code. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I probably should uh, bring it down and test it out. I don't, I don't see any unit tests that, Alvin, that Calvin wrote. Sorry, I called you Alvin. Alvin! I don't see any unit tests, which, again, is fine because I, I didn't really give you any specifications about where to write unit tests or how to write unit tests or, or integration tests. Um, so what I should probably do is just pull this down and test it out and make sure that it works. And I'm sure it does. Um, so we're in Cproj and it is. I didn't, that was part of my question. There's a lot going on in the solution, so I wasn't sure we wanted them. You're, you're not wrong there, Calvin. Uh, so <clears throat> there are and again, I just copied these from Cosmos. There's a functional test and a test project. And there's lots of stuff in here. And, uh, I, you know, 
having having talked to the Entity Framework guys uh, recently, um, they they aren't super like their their coverage is not complete for this yet. You know, Cosmos Provider is it's you know they're a relatively small team and they only have so much time for Entity Framework, Entity Framework Core, SQL Provider, and Cosmos Provider. So they they be missing some coverage as well. So that being said, if you want to look in these projects, you don't have to do this right now. We're gonna we're gonna merge your pull request, Calvin. It doesn't matter. But next time, uh, look in Couchbase tests or functional tests. Are those your tests or theirs? I wasn't sure. So uh, it's a good question, Calvin. So these are all their tests that they wrote for Cosmos that I just renamed to work with Couchbase uh, because some of the things are going to be the same. Those tests are still going to work. Um, that being said. Um, if you look at some of these tests, and we haven't done this very much, um, um, I think mostly the functional tests. There's actually a, a package, uh, custom converter. So, like, if you look at owned Couchbase query, okay. So, if you look at this, there's this owned query Couchbase test. This will used to be called owned query Cosmos test. I don't know what this test does, what it's about, no idea. But I do know it inherits from this base class. And this base class comes from, I believe it comes from a set of uh, predefined base classes. Um, I could be wrong here. Some of these are, this one maybe not, but some of these are this predefined base classes that anyone doing what we're doing, writing a provider, can import and just run as a, a, a sort of a baseline of tests to test your uh, provider. And then you could overwrite those tests to customize them or change them and uh, you know fix them and, and so on, right? So in this case, this is doing some stuff with Discriminator here, which we, we're not using literally Discriminator. We're using uh, type instead, which is more of a couch-based idiom to use type instead of Discriminator. Co uh, Cosmos, they use Discriminator. Um, that's something I don't see much in the wild with, with, cou with couch-based. It's usually type or doc type or something like that. So in that case, we'd want to override this and change this to say type instead of Discriminator. Um, but anyway, there's there's big packages out there. So like the, the people who are writing the Postgres provider are using this predefined package of base functional tests. So that being said, Calvin, if you're writing a unit test, put it in test. If you're writing a functional test, one that actually hits a database, I assume that's what that means, put it in functional tests. If you don't see a test there or you're not sure, do not hesitate to write your own test class. It's totally fine. Um, that is not a problem. I, I'm, I'm not going to reject or be unhappy about any extra tests <laughs> that are in there. If they're duplicate tests, that's fine. It's not a, not a problem. Uh, you know, I'd rather have too much duplicated tests than, than zero tests. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's some, that's a, that's a whole nother elephant. I think we got to bite off at some point is tests. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to... I want to uh, get Calvin's uh, branch here. So um, I know we were in this branch previously. What what branch are we in right now? So we're in the yeah we're in the release branch. Okay. So I want to switch to the replace item branch, and I'm going to do a pull on that, which I think should pull in your changes, Calvin. Hopefully, and it does. You need some Git Kraken in your life. So, Calvin, I, I tried Git Kraken on your recommendation for probably a month or two. And, you know, it might just be because I'm not in source control as much as I used to be back when I worked with you. I did not find it particularly better than uh, um, what I'm using right now is, is, uh, is Tortoise Git. And I also sometimes will drop into the Git command line. I didn't find it to be superior experience to those. Um, it's just maybe how I work differently, or maybe because I'm not again like you. You're you're doing multiple commits every day with a with a you know a, probably a bigger team than I'm on right now. Um, so I'm not I'm not bashing Git crack. I'm just saying it wasn't a, a right fit for me, or possibly I'm using it wrong. Yeah, you also dropped the command line quite a bit myself, quite a bit yourself. 
yeah, you know, there's some, some things, for whatever reason, I'm super comfortable doing them in this UI. Um, and some things I just like doing better in the, in the command line. So I try to stick to the UI. I'm more of a mousy, clicky person. That's just the way I am. I've brought this up before. I, I know that maybe makes me an outcast. That I'm not, uh, I'm not as in love with the command line as, as most uh, developers are, or as many developers are. I don't, I don't know. Probably a lot of developers out there do like the clicky stuff. But uh, anyway, you're a Git Kraken ambassador, so maybe we do a pair stream someday. Heck yeah, I'd love to do that. Or is that an official thing, Git Kraken ambassador, or did you just self appoint? I, I do have to say, I love the name, Git Kraken. Yeah, what? Self appointed or official? It's a thing, okay. So let's just let's just bring up Git Kraken here. Show you for a second. This is it's a Git client, uh, and I believe it's written in Electron sort of thing. Um, so it's cross platform. Got a little goldfish here in space. Yeah, totally free. I think they have a uh, paid version or something. Um, yeah, individuals, teams, self hosted, that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, I I used it for a while. It's interesting. It does some interesting stuff. But I, I feel like it's kind of opinionated. So if you're not if you're not doing the Git Kraken way or the Git flow or whatever opinion it's going for, then it's kind of like it's hard for me to find stuff that's going on there. Anyway, Git Kraken ambassadors. I want to look this up and see if I can find you. Ambassador. Why users love Git Kraken? Join leading custom. Let's see. Become an ambassador. Who are Git Kraken ambassadors? Well, where are you? Shouldn't you be listed on the website? I feel like you need to be listed on the website, Calvin. You need a big picture of Calvin Allen up here saying, bada bing, bada boom, use Git Kraken. <laughs> I'm not sure they actually list everybody. Okay, well, introducing the Git Kraken ambassadors. Oh, here we go. Here's a list of some of them. I don't know if Calvin's going to be on here. Yeah, well, there's a few, but they're not listed here on this particular blog post. Here's like a map of them. I wasn't in the first wave. Okay. Anyway, get cracking. Yeah, sure. Well, I'd love to do a pair program with that. Get you on here. Get you on the stream. I learned about it from that post and then applied. Okay, cool. Get cracking. Okay, where were we? All right. So, uh, yes. So now we're in the we're in the uh, the branch. The uh, Calvin's branch here. And uh, strip. Was it strip ID? Something like that? Yep, so here it is. Whoops. Uh, I hit F1 by mistake. So there's Calvin's code. So then what I want to do is I'm going to go over to... I have this example project, which is just a really simple console app. Although it's getting more, more complex. And... Uh, Oh, I thought I committed that. Um, I, thought I committed that sample from last time. Maybe I didn't. Uh, so, so what I want to do is uh, new GUID. Oh no, no, it's this one right here. Path random file name is what I've been using. This is a great way to get a random string, by the way. Use path random file name. I know it's in the path namespace, um, but it doesn't actually involve any sort of calls to the file system as far as I know. It just returns a random file name string. It's pretty cool. So, um, blog equals blog, and we'll give that the ID right here. Okay, and we'll save the changes. So that was what I had before. Now we'll, we'll sort of try out, um, oh, whoops, messed up. Try out the replace, and we have to be in the same context because, as we learned last time, switching contexts you have to actually do a query to uh, Entity Framework to retrieve an entity before you can update it. Otherwise, it, it bombs out. And we have not got any of that stuff working yet, so we can't we can't really do that yet. So we'll just do some uh, some simple updates here. We'll change this to Twitch.tv/slash Matthew T Groves. And context dot blogs dot 
great was it uh, updates update blog and context.save changes and then we're going to just do a visual inspection um, so this is going to be adding new document update document and after this update part runs we should see that this URL update is changed and we should also see that there's not an ID field in there. So let's bring up Couchbase. See if we've got um, five-ish viewers right now, maybe more, maybe less. Streamlabs, I don't know if the numbers are quite right. Sometimes I go to Twitch and it says a different number than Streamlabs. So, But I want to thank everyone for hanging out and just lurking. And just a reminder, if you have any questions about what's going on or anything in development, any coding questions, no matter how stupid you think it is, it's only stupid if you don't ask it. So ask away and uh, just keep that in mind. So we've got EF test here. There's nothing in it right now, no documents. So I'll go ahead and run this. And what we should end up with, shout out if you're lurking. And uh, I don't, you know, don't want to put Calvin on the spot here because he's already done plenty. But it seems like anyone who speaks up in the chat room gets a free subscription <laughs> from Calvin. <laughs> So uh, it can't hurt for you to, to, uh, to pipe in and just say, hey. All right, so that uh, app just ran. And if I do a refresh here, then we should see one document. Should have the Twitch URL. And it should not have the ID field in the document. John Calloway says hi. There you go. Thanks for stopping in, John Calloway. Saying hi. Appreciate that. So there we go. So the, the, uh, it updated. And the, the new URL is in there. And we're in good shape. So, with that in mind, I'm going to merge this pull request. Looks great. Thanks, Calvin. Oh my goodness, Calvin. I, I totally, I'm sorry about that. I didn't even put you on the spot. <laughs> but there you go. Just like I said. Looks great. Thanks, Calvin. So the other thing I like to do, and this is something I like to do in general, not just for my own project, um, but whenever I want to stack overflow or GitHub, uh, it doesn't hurt to just throw a quick thumbs up or a quick upvote on whatever you're looking at. So if you're looking at something and it's of any value to you whatsoever, just do a, a quick a quick thumbs up or a quick upvote on Stack Overflow. Uh, it's, a, it's a really simple thing you can do to just sort of make someone's day a little better because they can see, oh, hey, I got some votes. Hey, I got some thumbs up. So I'm doing something good. I do that every anytime I go to GitHub or anytime I go to Stack Overflow, if I'm just, even if I'm just reading it, upvote. If it's helpful to me at all. So it's something you can do to just uh, just spread a little niceness out there. Just like Calvin's doing by spreading some niceness and, and throwing out a gift sub to John Calloway. So thank you for that, Calvin. Looks great. Thanks, Calvin Allen. So let's go ahead and merge Calvin's pull request into the branch, which I believe I'm calling release 3.0-preview5, which is what they called an energy framework core. So I just used the same name there. So pull request successfully merged and closed. So if we go into our release branch here, we should see that we've got uh, pull request nine. There we go. Okay, so we'll go back to our projects board, low hanging fruit, and we can say, we can open this up, issue for full details. And it's a little hanging fruit because you can select a project out here. And although I think only people who are contributors can set a project on tickets. If you want to create a ticket, though, don't let that discourage you. You can create uh, tickets or issues as Couchbase or as GitHub calls them. And then I will see that and I will put it into the right category. Brandonia says everyone gets a sub. Yeah, Calvin's going all Oprah out here. Look under your chairs, people. There's a, there's a Twitch subscription. So, okay, uh, yep, uh, thank you, Calvin. Thank you, Calvin. Uh, I think it's probably good enough, and let's do a close. So give him a quick thumbs up while we're in here. And there we go, so back to the low-hanging fruit board. And the way I've got the automation set up is that if it's in progress and I hit a close on it, it'll automatically get moved over to the done section on our Kanban board. So look at that, we've got three tickets already done so we're really we're really cooking now all right so let's go back to EF core and uh, what I want to do is 
I made a change. And I thought I, I got a birthday coming up and I like Lamborghinis, just saying. Well, uh, John Calloway, I can't promise that Calvin can buy you a Lamborghini. But uh, what I can promise you is Calvin is the kind of guy who, if he could, he would buy you a Lamborghini. <laughs> uh, okay, let's uh, switch over to my sort of vein, vein branch here. Brandonius, very likely. Uh, yeah. Oh, it won't let me switch with... Uh, Changes hanging out there? He got me a Tesla last year. <laughs> so this is, uh, searches Amazon for Lamborghini Hot Wheels. Yeah, he might buy you a Lamborghini Matchbox car, John Calloway. <laughs> so I kind of want to commit this, uh, there's a smart solution. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's, so that's one thing. One of the skills that uh, I think I think I picked up a little bit, and Calvin's definitely uh, helped me pick this up, is uh, the company we used to work for together. Um, it's a, it was a very complex piece of software, and uh, to solve customer problems, you often have to think very laterally, and um, trying to figure out ways to uh, let I using the word leverage, the old business word leverage. Uh, leverage the existing system, the existing code base to accomplish something. Uh, and so uh, I like to think that, that that kind of skill, lateral thinking, is uh, something I've picked up, try to pick up from Calvin. Leverage, good TV show. I don't ever watch Leverage. There's so many good TV shows out there. I have such a huge backlog right now. So uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted to, I want to commit this sample code here. Um, but... I, I thought I could switch branches with that code hanging out there, but I guess not. I have to probably stash this, right? So git stash changes uh, sample program. I don't, I don't think I've used the stash on this on the UI before. Uh, okay, so then I can switch branches. Okay, and then I can, let's see, pull uh, from GitHub. EF Core GitHub is the upstream, that's the Microsoft one. Let me make sure I didn't do this already. Yeah, I did this already. Uh, kind of. Will you be at Codepalooza? Yes, John Calloway. I will be at Codepalooza. One of my favorite events. And I will be speaking there as well as attending. And I am super pumped about it this year. I've talked about it on the stream in the past. Brendan will not be there. Oh, man. Last time, Codepalooza, what did we... We got together and we played something in the game night, didn't we, Brendan? Uh, it was one of those games where it's like... Um, it's like a bluffing game, right? Where you have to find the person who's a saboteur or something like that. Guy Royce was there. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Code names, maybe? I don't remember. So we're not going to be there. That's a bummer. Code Blue is a great conference. And it's in Louisville. I believe it's in August this year. I was planning on bringing my family, but it turns out that's like the first week of school for my, for my kids. So it'll just be me. So there I am, Matthew Groves. And I, I'm two presentations, that's right, two. Whenever, uh, I will be at Dog Food, yes, I, uh, unless that's the board game you're talking about. But yeah, Dog Food Con, I will be there. Also speaking, my first time at Dog Food Con. Whenever I apply to Code Blues, and I'm not complaining, please, Chad Green, if you're watching, I'm not complaining. But I, I, I usually submit probably four, five, six sessions to most conferences that I submit to. Some conferences, they only like you to submit one. Some conferences, they want you to submit a whole bunch. So I just sort of pick out four or five sessions and submit them to a conference. Whenever I submit to Codepalooza, they always put me to work. <laughs> so two sessions is actually uh, pretty nice compared to my, my uh, Codepalooza schedules in the past. So um, 
I think one year I even did four sessions at Code Palooza. Chad knows what he's doing. Oh, no kidding. Uh, Chad's a great guy, Chad Green. He's one of the organizers of uh, Code Palooza, and he also, I think he's involved with at least one user group in the Louisville area. Uh, and I think he's also involved with some other conferences too. I don't know. He's, he's one of those community guys that just goes out there and, and does a lot of stuff. Um, but there I am. I'll be, I'll be presenting on uh, background tasks, which, uh, which I like Hangfire for. I've talked about on this uh, stream in the past. And intro to SQL++, which is uh, one of the coolest things I like about Couchbase, is it has a SQL++ implementation. So that's that. Dog Food Con, I think, is the other one that Brendan uh, referred to there. Sounds fun. Uh, I don't know if they posted speakers yet. I'm also speaking at JavaScript and Friends. Well, since uh, we're going to talk my speaking schedule again, I may, may as well uh, do this do this again. We'll kind of a natural break here between pull requests. Aaron Petrie is speaking at Dog Food Con. That's pretty cool. Uh, he is uh, a relative of uh, one of Calvin's, Calvin's boss, I guess. I don't know. Um, okay, bring up my schedule. So Dog Food Con. Let's see. Am I, am I on this list here? Yes, there I am. Uh, yes, this is a brand new session called Demystifying NoSQL. So I've done lots of different sort of intro to NoSQL sessions in the past, and, and this is one where it's just kind of like, uh, basically I'm going to kind of show up and, and try to have a conversation, answer questions, and, and show off some interesting stuff. Brendan says, where am I? There you are, Brendan Enric, making use of new C-sharp features. So look at that. Brendan will be there as well, Dog Food Con. Awesome. That's me. Yeah, it is you. I know. There you are. We kind of have similar poses in our pictures. I don't know. I think I'm the more attractive one, clearly. All right. So speaking of schedule, C Sharp 8. Yeah. Is it, uh, let me see. Brendan. Uh, it's on with C Sharp 8. Let's see. Yep. C Sharp 8. Do I have Zoom it running? I do have Zoom running. Uh, yes, uh, after those, he'll show you what's on the horizon for C Sharp that you'll get when C Sharp 8 is finally released. So it looks like he's going to be doing some stuff with 7 and 8, including tuples, which are very cool. Uh, actually, we did some tuple stuff uh, a couple uh, episodes, episodes ago with uh, our hang fire pull request, which I thought was a very good use of tuples, by the way. Uh, if you're looking for good examples, uh, Brendan, I can sh I can point you to one I thought was very good. But yeah, I got some non-nullable stuff coming up in C Sharp 8 and uh, pattern matching and stuff like that. That should be an interesting session. Definitely check it out. Okay, so uh, my schedule. I brought this up, the screen up before. This is uh, this is a tool called Evman, something we use internally at Couchbase. It's not a Couchbase. Um, we didn't create this, but it's a tool we use. I think some people at Red Hat created it. We use to track some of our speaking and sponsoring sessions. Let's see, Mini Wheats, hey, what's up? Thanks for the subscribe, Mini Wheats. I literally have no idea what is going on, but I'm glad to see you excited about it. <laughs> so, Mini Wheats, uh, speaking of cars, Mini Wheats is a car guy. I see him uh, every once in a while. We're, we're like old, old friends. He's like a, a family friend. We used to go to school together, we used to work together, all kinds of stuff. Um, he's way out in I want to say Seattle. My son's in the room here, looking at me with a funny look on his face. What's up, Matthew? You're just talking about dog food and sea sharks and <laughs> Dog food. Dog food. Did you want something? No. Okay. okay. And Coral's stopping in. Hey, Coral. Thanks for stopping. I'm doing my live stream right now, Matthew. He's like, uh, my my son comes in. He can't see what's going on, on the screen, so he's like. You're in there talking about dog poop and mini wheats and C sharp, and I have no idea what's going on. So uh, that's that's funny. Anyway, uh, thanks for stopping in, Coral. Just going on my on my event schedule here. I thought I'd show this since the it, it comes comes up. I don't want to miss anybody. Yeah, my son's name is Matthew. Yeah, around the house, uh, I'm Matt and he's Matthew. When when he's not around though, I go by Matt or Matthew. Doesn't matter. Uh, anyway, uh, I, yeah, I'm real creative when it comes to naming. Uh, so this week, actually, I'm going to be in Houston uh, starting Wednesday. So I there will not be a stream on Thursday. Matthew seems really excited that I'm not that I'm going to be in Houston. 
wonder why that is. I think he, some, there's some things that his mom lets him get away with when I'm not around. So I think that's what he's excited about. Anyway, I'm going to be in Houston for the uh, Xamarin, uh, Xamarin, <clears throat> excuse me, Xamarin Developer Summit, I believe. At least you didn't go with cash and validation. <laughs> anyway, it's live about 30 minutes south of your brother. So my brother lives in uh, Tacoma. Is that right? Tacoma. For some reason, anyways, I thought you lived on the opposite side of Seattle from him. But uh, maybe you moved or something. I don't know. Tacoma. Yeah. All right. I was just out in Seattle uh, earlier this year for the MVP Summit. And I got to have a dinner with my brother. So that's nice. Whenever I go out to Seattle for MVP Summit, I like to check in with my brother because he's been out there for a while. Uh-oh. Matthew's coming closer. What do you want? I want to see what's on the screen. You want to see what's on the screen? Okay. Uh, Coral just registered to go to a conference in Pittsburgh in August. You're going to Abstractions too. I'm not going to Abstractions. It's the same time as Code Palooza, so I had to choose between them to submit. And I, uh, Code Palooza, I've been to many times, so I submitted to that one instead. This is why Coral, I wanted you to give me a full debriefing of Abstraction because I've never been. Looks like a cool conference. Uh, I want to go, but the timing didn't work out this year. You had to bail on dog food last year with the tech bash instead. Oh, it's so tough these days. There's so many good conferences, and it's, it, it's impossible for conference organizers to, to pick a day because <laughs> they have so many constraints to work with. Like they have to have the venue available. They have to have their own time available. Uh, they have to figure out uh, other conferences that are, well, if you've already been on the other, you should branch out to a new one. <sighs> I mean, there's something to be said for that, Coral, but, uh, you know, I, got, I love Code Palooza so much, and they've been so good to me in the past. I, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't not go to that one. So, uh, anyway, Xamarin Conference coming up this week in Houston. Uh, I'm not a mobile guy at all, so I'm going to be basically trying to learn a lot from this conference. But I'll be there. I'm not speaking. I'll be running. I'll be working at the Couchbase booth. Couchbase is sponsoring the Xamarin event, so uh, we're super excited about that. Ah, uh, well, I'm sure I'll see you again sometime in the next decade. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, every, what, every four or five years we get together somewhere in person. You know, I've still never been out to Philadelphia for any conferences, and there's some good ones out there. So I need to get out there at some point. I know you're not in Philadelphia proper, but close enough. KCDC is coming up uh, next week, right? Jeez, already. I'll be speaking there as well at KCDC, and also I'm manning the Couch Base booth. And I'll be at PubConf, and I'll be helping at the, the, kids, the kids' day after KCDC. So if you're going to KCDC, you're going to be sick of seeing me, because I'll be everywhere. Since you deliver, after that, it's a one-day conference in Cincinnati. I'll be speaking there, and Couchbase is also sponsoring there. First time Couchbase is sponsoring Since you deliver, which used to be called Day of Agile uh, slash Since you Code. Great conference. Check that out. JavaScript and Friends is what Calvin is referring to. Let's see, as an example, I'm taking the kiddo to see an endocrinologist in Seattle today, and the GPS says 71 miles puke. Yeah, Seattle's a little, the, like, the layout of Seattle, Tacoma area is a little weird, because it's like Redmond's up there, and then there's Seattle, which is actually kind of, kind of small and dense, and then Tacoma's just like south of that, it's like, it's not, it just, it is very spread out. Um, yeah, 71 miles. That seems, that seems excessive though. Anyway, so maybe you're in like South Tacoma or like uh, a Tacoma suburb or something. What is my son doing now? He, what is he doing? I don't even know what's going on. Anyway, JavaScript and friends. JS and friends, is that what it is? This is a conference being put on, uh, I guess that's not the address, javascriptandfriends.com. This is a brand new conference being put on, uh, but at least by at least being helped. Uh, Calvin is one of the organizers of this conference here in Columbus, Ohio. Really, the JavaScript of friends. I will be speaking at this one as well. You can see there I am again, and I'll be talking about uh, similar to the SQL plus plus. I'll be talking about querying NoSQL with SQL, and this is a, a this is a session I've done a lot. It's one of my favorites, so I'm happy to do it. It's not like JavaScript language related. It's JavaScript object notation related. So it's a, definitely a JavaScript friend. And the Olympia, where I am, is south of that. Olympia is the capital FYI. I assume that's a abbreviation for Olympia. Also, next time you come to Seattle, let me know and I'll drive up for food. 
So I got renewed for MVP again, mini wheat. So I will probably be in Seattle at the very latest sometime next early spring or late winter. That's when I'll be up there. Okay, I will try to remember to uh, ping you as well. I'll, I'll, I'll probably, if I choose between Nathan and you, I'm going to go with Nathan. But uh, if I can make time for both of you, I will do that. I mostly spend time in the Redmond area uh, while I'm up there. Uh, so um, uh, some of the like Redmond hotels, I think, or I don't remember. That's where I'll be. But yeah, uh, definitely, we should definitely get together. All right. We we're halfway through this list. Code, Code Palooza, I've already brought that one up. Cool, congrats. I'll be there too for Summit. Hey, Dev Lead, thanks for stopping by and saying hey. Uh, great. Have, have we met in person before, Dev Lead? Uh, the MVP Summit, there's so many MVPs. And I, I, I try to get around and talk to as many people as I can. Um, but if you're in a different area than me, you know, we're usually in different buildings. Uh, so it's kind of hard to get together. But uh, cool. I'm glad to, glad to see you'll be at the Summit as well. It's a great event. I've done... I've been an MVP for going on seven years now. I've only been able to make it to two summits. They've been really good events. Code Palooza coming up in Louisville, August. Definitely get some tickets for that one as well. And for JavaScript and Friends. And for Cincy Deliver. And for KCDC. And for Xamarin. Buy tickets for all these. Although Xamarin might be too late. Might be sold out. I don't know. KCDC might be too late as well. But definitely go and check it out. KCDC info. This is a huge event. Oh, looks like tickets are still on sale. If you're in KC area, check it out. This is a really good conference. Big conference, but a community conference. Lots of great content. Lots of great stuff there. Dog Food Con. I've never been. It's my, it's, they've been doing this for years. I've never been to it. I've heard really good things about it. I'm finally, the timing has never worked out in the past. It's either been I can't get the day off or there's some other conference going on. Um, so this will be the first time Dog food also be a speaker there, which is which is uh, nice as well. I get to check out Dog Food Con for the first time. Tickets I think are on sale for that one. All things open, I will be there as well. This is a, a really big open source conference in the North Carolina and Raleigh, North Carolina Research Triangle area. This will be my third year there at All Things Open as a speaker and also as a, working the sponsor booth. My son is being a real goof today. He's just. We gave him Messenger, Facebook Messenger for kids, and now he's trying to call me on Facebook Messenger. Uh, this one here, KubeCon in San Diego. I don't know if I'm going to be there yet or not. Uh, it's on my list, but that's a little ways away. I don't know if I'm going to go to it yet. Okay, so that's my schedule as of right now. Uh, pretty busy uh, travel schedule. Don't know. Met quite a few people at Summit. You're an ALM Azure MVP based in Sweden. Max a couple of times a year. Across the pond. Busy times. So, uh, you know, I'm in the developer technologies MVP. I think is what they call it these days. Used to be called Visual Studio. Used to be called C Sharp. I don't know. Um, but I, I will go into the Azure sessions, a couple of them, um, because I think there's some, some definitely some overlap there. Uh, but definitely not the ALM stuff. I, I, uh, I don't... Uh, I don't dip into the ALM sessions too much. So hey, next time you're there, let's uh, let's make it a point to to meet in person. And uh, you can't really miss me. I'm the I'm one of the tallest people there. <laughs> so uh, look for look for a tall person, and chances are it's going to be me. Calvin dropping the subscriptions again. Oh my goodness! Thank you, Calvin. <laughs> really appreciate this, Calvin. I I owe you like. Uh, I owe you at least a, a trip to Yabo's Tacos um, for, for all this, for all the pull requests and the subs you've been doling out. I appreciate it, man. Thank you very much. One of these days, we've got to get together. I will be at the next Condug, um, July. Speaking of events, if anyone's here in the Central Ohio area or interested in making the trip down, every year, centralohio.net user group, we have a... Um, we have what's called lightning talks, which are, it's kind of a open mic night a little bit for speakers. You can go up there and speak about some technical topic for 10, 15 minutes. And, um, I will be there this time. I've missed almost all the conducts this year, but I'm going to be at this one. It's right before Cincy, Cincy Deliver. Dev lead. Actually, I'm a developer technology MVP too this year. Been Azure for a couple of years, so multi-category now. Ooh, look at you. Multi-category MVP. 
That's like uh, next level MVP. Or as, as Calvin would say when we work together, MVP. Someday that MVP will be mine. Someday. Oh, yes. Someday. Calvin, man, I think it might be time. Why don't you send me an email? And we can see if we can work on that. And I got, uh, I got at least one or two other people in mind as well that I, I want to get nominated this year. I think this is going to be the year. So let's, uh, let's get that going. Don't let me forget, though. Send me an email. All right, so Lightning Talks, July 25th. I will be there. I don't know who we have on the docket yet. But if you want to speak, if you're in the Columbus area, uh, I want to start streaming again before I get in. Monkey face. Do it. Do it, man. Absolutely. Uh, so I don't know who we have on the docket this year. We have six total slots. So if you want to speak about something for 15, 20 minutes, tech-related, you know, hopefully it's .NET or at least .NET adjacent related, but uh, we're kind of loose on those rules. We're not going to be super strict about them. If you show up and you're like, oh, I want to talk about Python, straight up hardcore Python, eh, you know, maybe not the best fit. <laughs> uh, let's see, me either. Might email Alan here in a minute and ask. Yeah, yeah. So Calvin's also one of the organizers of this conduct group. And uh, I'm an organizer pretty much in name only right now because I've been very much absent from conduct most of this year for, for traveling stuff. But it's a .NET user group in the .NET Foundation. And we meet once a month and we do lightning talks in July. So it's a great chance for first time speakers or just to show up and get like six different presentations, get like a fire hose of cool stuff. Uh, thrown at you. So definitely sign up for this. Email contact at condug.org with your name and topic. Okay. Whew. What time is it? 1130. So uh, I've got a meeting, I think, at noon. So I probably have to shut it off the stream at noon. Let me just double check the old calendar. See if we have time to get through one of these, one more of these pull requests. A um, lot of chat messages distracting today, which is not a problem. It's totally fine. Okay, so actually today I, I have, I mean, there is a meeting, but it's not mandatory for me to be there. So uh, we may be fine. I may go over a little bit today. That's okay. Um, all right. So next up, let's look at a Brant Burnett pull request. So we'll kind of go in order here uh, of uh, when he opened them. So this first one here is called, and I have, I have not looked at these at all until just now. So I have no idea what these are. Uh, but this one says, use dot notation for object key access. So this is a, a pull request. I don't think we have an issue for this, do we? Um, so he's, yeah, he's created a, a, a bug as well. Mm, excuse me, uh, some, some issues as well. So this one is a use dot notation for object key access. Let's see what this is. Thanks for your follow, Dev Lead. Appreciate that. Can you be a subscriber and not follow? Interesting. Anyway, thank you for that follow. Appreciate that. I'm still, you know, I, I'm still kind of early in my Twitch streaming days trying to learn how things work, but appreciate the follow, Dev, Dev Lead. So let's see, uh, key access expression. So it looks like his pull request is, hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna need some more information on what this is. Um, use done, so I'm gonna give him a thumbs up because I appreciate, I appreciate uh, what he submitted here. Um, but there's no information. Uh, so I must, because it's brand, <laughs> I know it's probably right. It's probably a good thing. Um, but I don't know what's going on here. So um, brand, thank you for the PR. Could you provide a little more detail about what, uh, about what this uh, PR? I wonder if he opened all these just trying to get the link stuff working. I think you're probably right, Calvin. This is probably, he's probably laying the groundwork for doing some link stuff. But I don't, I don't know what this PR does. Uh, I am very ignorant <laughs> of, uh, well, let's just try it. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure this is necessary, but I'm very ignorant 
uh, and I would appreciate uh, a little uh, mm, appreciates uh, I, and I would like to learn how's that I would like to learn what's happening okay so we'll just send that a little comment there let's see uh, definitely perfect procrastinating myself talk tomorrow work on slides or chat on twitch decisions hmm so I have kind of um, and I, I've been told that I, I work kind of in a um, a structured discreet way uh, I, I I feel like I'm kind of a sloppy you know sort of seat of the pants kind of guy but I've been told that I'm very structured and so what I've done is actually schedule two blocks of time for twitch uh, oh although maybe what you're talking about is other people's twitch channels dropping into chat and yes I am I'm very much in that camp so I yesterday I, I, uh, I saw that uh, uh, dev chatter was on and I know he's doing some cool Final Fantasy 7 stuff with C-sharp, so I dropped in and started making some terrible jokes and, and annoying Brendan, um, but uh, it was absolutely me procrastinating, like working on uh, my KCDC presentation, for instance, which I really need to get on and, and get that done. Um, yep, I understand. Okay, so that's one. I, I don't know what the dot notation is, but I'm sure it's important, so we'll get some more details on that. On to the next one. Get the document ID when getting entities. Okay. So he's doing some entity projection expression. And yes, so I think this has to do with back to the way I was back to what I was talking about earlier about the way Couchbase stores documents. Hey John, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate you dropping in. Have a good lunch. Uh, I think this has to do with the way that Couchbase stores keys differently than, say, Cosmos does. Is that Cosmos? Let's get to this here. Cosmos stores it as part of the JSON itself, with like a special, specially named field, and Couchbase stores it as metadata, sort of outside the document itself. So I'm guessing that's related to this, um, because this meta ID and this alias is in here, I'm sure that's something that's being passed in, yeah. Uh, so this meta ID is the way to get that when you're writing a, a SQL query. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm gonna, again, uh, I think that's what's going on, but um, Brant, uh, this looks to be related to Nickel. Yes, Matthew. Okay, you want to get on the stream here? You want yeah. to come over and get on camera? My son's right over here next to me, just watching. Uh, looks like everybody's a nickel, and uh, the... Oh, you can kind of see him here. Engine review is starting. <laughs> he wants to talk about the All-Star game. Uh, the Dodge, One of the Dodgers All-Stars is, is starting pitching for the NL, and not uh, one of the Reds All-Stars. That's what he's telling me right now. Quit banging your chair into mine, you goof. Uh, okay. Hey, Matt 2.0. Calvin just called you Matt 2.0. I'm Matt 1.0. You're Matt 2.0. You're the more improved version. What do you what? think? <laughs> he says, what? Cool. And, uh... I think my glasses are more improved. Stop. <laughs> I don't uh, have checkerboard glasses. Anyway, couch base stores the ID in metadata. But uh, could you, uh, well, I'll see. Can you confirm this? Or, uh, and or provide a little more information. And again, I want to start by saying thank you. It's always nice to be polite. This looks like to be related to Nickel and the way Couchbase stores the ID and metadata. Can you confirm this and provide a little more information? Does that sound rude at all? <laughs> it's like, ooh. Okay. So, uh, once again, it just doesn't cost me anything to throw a quick little thumbs up here, just to be nice. Did I do that on the first one? Let me just double check. Doesn't take me but Yep, I already threw a thumbs up on here. Okay. Create bucket if missing in create database if not exist. What? How long is this? How long is what? This is 
I'm probably going to go till maybe, to at least noon, probably. Well, it's lunchtime. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, don't worry. I, I think maybe he's down here because I told him not to do any YouTube or um, video streaming while I was streaming because I've been having some dropped frame issues recently. So maybe he's just bored and wants to come down here and bother me. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. All right, so this one, he's implementing, he's implementing the create database if not exists method. And he's also implementing the provider configuration in Couchbase test store, which is actually very cool. <laughs> uh, so yes, I had this uh, sort of not implement exception here. He put it in here. So this code will create a bucket uh, and then uh, he's just done some spacing stuff, it looks like here, which is fine, I guess. I'm learning so much. What's that? I'm learning so You're much. You're learning so much. And then the internal Couchbase database creator. So it looks like he's commented out some stuff here. He's removed some code and just called that method. Okay. And Couchbase database creator test. Uh, so he's actually doing some unit tests here. So this is really good stuff. So what I want to do is I want to actually, uh, I'm going to actually pull this out and try it. So let's see if we can't uh, switch to that branch. Do I have anything hanging out here? What's with the thing in the, with the eyes? What's with the thing in the eyes, this up here? Yeah. That's my uh, webcam. Okay. That, there he is, he's on camera. I put googly eyes on it, on my oh. webcam. Why? Yeah, why? Because uh, so I, he asked me why I have googly eyes on my webcam. And so the reason I do that is I'm a remote worker. I don't know if I can really show this to you. Maybe I'll take a picture of it. Coral says, why not? That's, also, that's a good response. Why not put googly eyes on it? I've got a whole bag of googly eyes down here. I've been itching to use on something. Let me see if I can't get a picture of this to show you on the stream. Uh, there we go. Uh, so I work remotely, Matthew. I work at home. Okay. okay? And uh, so whenever I meet with my coworkers, I do it over camera, like a video call, like we do with Messenger. Okay? So one of the, one of the problems with that is, is that, uh, you know, I want to I try to make eye contact with people while I'm talking to them. But if I look at the screen, that's not where their eyes actually are. Yeah. Their eyes, I look up here is where their eyes actually would be. So if I don't have eyes to look at, I don't naturally look at the camera. So I put googly eyes up there okay. so that I have something to look at. So that makes sense. He says that makes sense. So there it is. You can see my camera. I put googly eyes on it right there just because that's the way humans work is they look for, they look for eyes. Coral says, well, I know what I need to buy later. So let me see if I find it somewhere in here in my little drawer. I got a bag of googly eyes. I got this on AliExpress for like, I don't know, less than a dollar. Man, you're Matthew says, you're strange and weird. Well, I, I don't think... <laughs> dog food and mini wheats. Uh, let's see. Cora says, I catch myself not looking at the camera on stream all the dang time. Yeah, so it's, it's not perfect, but it's better. And it's just, it's just more fun to put googly eyes on stuff. So... Yeah, I, I got the whole bag. I've only used two of them. I need to put googly eyes on something else for sure. I don't know what I should put it on. Uh, uh, S time stream. Hey, thanks for dropping in. Uh, that face, that feeling when no dot net dad. My dad just shouts at me for not knowing the x86 instructions set by heart. <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. Googly eyed vandalism is the best kind of vandalism. I would tend to agree. You know, I'm not really into the vandalism, but if I had to rank it, googly eye at the top. Definitely. Googly eye at the top and then Banksy. <laughs> so, uh, S Time Stream, thanks for drop, dropping in. I hope you're not serious that your dad's shouting at you for not knowing um, assembly language. Uh, my, my son over here, uh, I don't think he's terribly interested in programming or coding, are you? We've we've looked at it in the past, like computer programming and stuff. I do it at school. You don't do you don't do programming at school, no. at least not yet. You do have computer classes. Um, you know he's he's done some Minecraft and things like that, like building in Minecraft is kind of approaching programming. But you know he's about the age that I was when I first got into programming, and I was really super into it. He's into baseball, 
uh, as that. much as I am into what was in the programming his age. So, what's that? Sure. No, I'm not. I'm not a fan of baseball. What are you talking You're about? not a fan of baseball? Yeah. He, play, he plays uh, RBI baseball video game all day long, and uh, he knows all the MLB stats by heart. Go ahead. Ask him. Ask him. Someone in the chat there, if you know baseball at all, ask him any sort of stats question. He could tell you the answer for sure. Plus, he, he plays on, uh, he plays baseball. He has a travel team this year. He'll be in, in the rec league yeah. later this fall. We're doing tryouts right now. We're doing several different tryouts, so he's way into uh, baseball. Let's see. Uh, Coral says, pretty sure by his age, I'd been exposed to Logo and Oregon Trail. So Oregon Trail is an old educational video game. Yeah. Educational video game you're into these days is Edutyping. Is that the one you really like yeah. the most? It's a it's a, a game where you learn to type, and he's he's actually a pretty fast typist. I didn't really learn to touch type until I was like in eighth grade. I can type around fifteen sixty. Fifteen sixty words a minute. Yeah. Yeah. So he's he's pretty good at typing. Like ninety five, ninety six accuracy maybe. Ninety five percent accuracy at forty to fifty words a minute. That's pretty good. That's about where I was in like eighth grade. So he's already oh. surpassed me. And then a logo. I don't think I ever used Logo, but it's uh, it's the one with the turtle, right? It's like a it's like a sort of an educational programming language with graphics and stuff. Uh, do you remember the? Is this a baseball question? No, not yet. No one's asked a baseball question yet. Do you remember the board games we had with the robot turtles? Do you remember that board game? No. I got I got them some programming so board games. There was one with like Minecraft. Remember that one? Oh yeah. Like a one. like a board game sort yeah. of thing. I got a couple of those for them, and they didn't seem to. I mean, they had a little bit of fun with it. Didn't seem to like it that much. I think if anyone's going to be a programmer in this family, it's going to be Emma. I don't, I don't know about you. Well, besides me, you goof. Uh, my, my daughter is, uh, seems a lot more technically minded than my son. My son's more of a go out and play sports sort of thing. My daughter's more of an artistic, like play the piano and, and uh, creative sort of thing. So if she, does, if she doesn't become some sort of artist, I think, I think a programmer might be the type of job for her. No one has any baseball questions for him. You can't you can't stump the chump over here with uh, with baseball questions. I don't think any of these people play ba or watch baseball at all. Mm. Although I think Coral, you know Coral's been to some Philly games. Some Phillies. He's he's in the or Cor Sorry, sorry Coral. But uh, um, Coral lives in uh, Philadelphia area, oh. so he's a Phillies fan. So okay. Coral's a Phillies fan. Okay. Do you like I'm trying, Harper? man. I'm trying. What's that? Does he like Bryce Harper? Coral, do you like Bryce Harper? He wants to know if you like Bryce Harper. He's uh, Coral says he. Uh, Coral says I'd embarrass myself trying to stump him. So Coral feels like uh, stumping you would be <laughs> would be challenging. Why? Just do it. I don't care. <laughs> he says just do it. <laughs> he just wants to show off. All right. So okay, I don't have any files that I'm hanging out here. I'm trying to switch over. I'm trying to do some coding here, but I keep getting distracted. <laughs> say it's your fault. All right, I want to switch to what was this branch called? I've forgotten already. Issue thirteen, create buckets. This is the one that Brant created. Coral says I watched them when they won the World Series, but honestly, most of my familiarity with the team is stuck in nineteen ninety three. All right, Matthew, can you name any Phillies players in nineteen ninety three? Mike Schmidt. So Mike Schmidt. I think maybe. Did he play in nineteen ninety three? What can you tell us about Mike Schmidt? I know that he had the record for most home runs on a team for his whole career. He, he had the most home runs yeah, for on one team. On one team yeah. for his whole career. Yeah, and um, he hit. He did hit four home runs in a game. He hit four home runs in a game. And what? Uh, what? When was the game? Do you remember? No. <laughs> so who else hit, hit four home runs in a game that you know of? Scooter Jeanette. Scooter Jeanette for the Reds. J.D. Martinez, Ted Williams. Ted Williams. Schmidt played more in the 80s, if I recall yeah. correctly. That's what Coral says. Did Mike, no, not uh, Steve Carlson? Steve Carlson, maybe? See, he, he's beyond my knowledge of baseball. I, I, I'm pretty much limited to the Reds, and even that I'm not, like, very good. Coral says also older. Steve Carlson, also oh. older. What? Okay. I don't know. I know the Phillies were really bad in, like, the 1970s and 80s. He says the Phillies were really bad in the 1970s and 80s. You sure about that? Yes, I'm sure. All right. What? What did he say? Do you know who Double Dutch was? Is that 
Is that a nickname? That sounds familiar. I don't know. You don't know who Double Dutch is? No. Oh, looks like you stumped him. Congratulations, Coral. You stumped the chump. Uh, Doesn't know who Double Dutch is. <laughs> I don't know who Double Dutch is either, for that matter. Chris no Phillies from 1970s. <laughs> His Phillies 1970s trivia is, is oh, weak. Oh, right back. Oh, he's, he's going to go look it up, probably. Yeah, I am. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he I'm is. <laughs> oh, boy. I, I don't know. For, baseball? All I know is base 16. <laughs> 1993 was the 70s? Apparently, the 70s and 1993, it's pretty much the same thing. It's all the same thing to a kid who was born in 2008. Wasn't that 10 years ago? Keep the language down there, Cora, please. But, uh, yeah, I, I understand the feeling. Oh, boy. <laughs> yes, yes, I get that feeling all the time. When, when we talk about, for the Reds, for me, it was 1990 Reds. That was my childhood Reds. What was the question? Did Barry Bonds ever play for the Phillies? Yeah. I don't think so. He played for the Tony He played for the Pirates. Yeah. And the Giants. I think that's it. That's it. Here's Mike Schmidt. He's got, he's got his, one of his books now, his baseball books. Hold it up here so they can see what book it is. Okay. That's the back of it. Oh, okay. The big, the big book of who? Which I'm sure he's memorized. <sighs> Issue 13, Create Buckets. There it is right there. Great new branch and switch to that branch. Does he know Aaron Nola? Uh, so Dutch was Darren Dalton. Have you heard of Darren Dalton? He's shaking his head no. So Coral has oh, somewhere a measure up to Dutch full size poster. Does who is know, Darren Dalton? Does he know uh, Roy Holiday? <laughs> do you know? Do you know Roy Holiday? Holiday. Holiday. I'm sure you've heard of Roy Holiday. So he had, he had a poster with a ruler, and he would mark his height against one of the Phillies players. Or would mark, mark height against the Phillies player. Okay. You have uh, some stickers on your wall, don't you? Some Reds players. Not, not full-size ones. Huh? Jay Bruce. Jay Bruce. No, he doesn't play for the Reds anymore. Halliday is getting more into the series champs. That's, that's more modern day. Uh, for those tuning in, you're, you're watching Baseball Talk with uh, Matthew Groves instead of live coding with Matt Groves. <laughs> trying to get, so I'm in the issue 13 branch, okay. Just try, try me. Try to ask me questions. Try to ask me questions, he says. I want to make sure I'm in the right branch here, so Couchbase Client Wrapper. All-star votes in a single year. Do you know who got the most all-star votes in a single year? Uh, Ken Griffey Jr. No. No? I think you've asked me this one before. Yeah, I have. It happened in 2015. Happened in 2015. I don't think he knows player. But he plays for the Braves. He plays for the Braves. I think, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's over 19 home runs. Coral says, one more chance at a nickname, Wild Thing? No. Do you know who Wild Thing is? I mean, I think we both know who yeah. Wild Thing is from the movie, yeah. right? Um, I don't think his name is Wild Man. Wild Thing, Wild Thing. Wild Thing, what? no. It's not him. I'm going to guess it's a pitcher. It's not a pitcher. It's a third baseman. Wild, wild Man? No. Who are you talking about? It's a third baseman. Who is a third baseman? Got the most all -star votes oh, oh, here. okay. He's still talking about the all star votes thing. <laughs> we moved on to something else. What were they talking about? Uh, he, uh, Cor Coral, one more chance at a nickname, Wild Thing. I, th I think Coral wants you to tell me, who, tell you who, say who Wild Thing is. I don't know. He's from the movie. Well, besides, I'm, I'm guessing, you know, I may be wrong, Coral, but is, is there a real person who's nicknamed Wild Thing? Or are we, are we just talking about the major league movies? All right, so I want to look at create database if not exists. Wild Thing Phillies threw the pitch that ended the 93 World Series against the Jays. Oh, yeah, I know that. Totally. Are you being sarcastic? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he doesn't know. Uh, create database if not exists. 
if you're in, if you live in Philadelphia, wouldn't you be a Phillies fan though? Probably not. Probably not. No. Well, who would you, who would you be a fan of if you lived in Philadelphia? Reds. You'd be a Reds fan if you lived in Philadelphia. Yes. I don't I don't think so, kid. Mitch Williams is wild thing. Oh yeah, he uh, threw the pitch to Joe Carter, and he, it was a walk on three-run home run in the bottom of the ninth inning to end the World Series. Did you get all that, everybody? Yep. He threw the pitch to Joe Carter. It was a walk-off three-run home run to end of the World Series. Somewhere, it's, it's in here. I just know. It's in the book here. He says, "Yeah, of course he's a Reds fan. I'm a Reds fan." Coral says, "I do have one last bit of baseball trivia in me." When Joe Carter came up to the plate in the ninth inning of Game 6 of the 1933 World Series, the Toronto Blue Jays were channeling the Philadelphia Phillies 6-5, but the Jays had two men on base, meaning that Carter had a chance to win the game in this series with one swing back. But to count two balls and one strike, the Phillies pitcher Mitch Williams. Yep, there you go. Coral says, so what do you know about Ed Roush? Ed if you're Roush. a Reds fan, yeah. Ed Roush, where, where uh -oh. is he from? Oh, no, he doesn't know anything about Ed Roush. Two Reds players on here. There's only two Reds players in this book. You, yes. But you know, you know stuff that's not in that book, right? Yeah. Okay. It's Pete Rose and Earl Chapman. That's all I've seen here. Pete Rose and Earl Chapman. Thank you for the follow, Paral, Paral, Paral Cobra, and thank you for the follow, Ahendro. <laughs> Even though I'm, I'm sorry that you tuned in on Baseball Trivia Day. <laughs> we usually talk about databases on here and, and coding. But right now we're on a we're on a baseball trivia kick. Frank Robinson, it hasn't been the Orioles yet. Yeah, Frank Robinson. Ed, Ed Roush. I I know the name. I know he played for the Reds. I don't know the I don't know the uh, yeah. I don't know the era though, for Ed Roush. Thank you for the follow, everybody. I appreciate you stopping in. I'll be streaming for a little bit longer here. I want to see if we can get this uh, pull request tested out. Oh, no kidding. Coral Roush, yeah. he's related to Ed Roush. Oh. He says, he was Ed was foul-mouthed, stubborn, inducted to the Hall of Fame, and it is his family, and it's Coral's family. Oh. That, that's pretty cool, Coral. Is that, uh, like, do you know what, what uh, Ed's relation is to you? Like a distant uncle or something? We actually have a relative who uh, yeah. is a, a baseball player, professional baseball they player, too. most consecutive home run titles. Oh, <laughs> and we're just going on something else? Yes. Who won the most consecutive... Home what? Home run titles. Home run titles, he says. With 23, then 51. I'm going to guess it's Babe Ruth. Oh, no, no, or, or Hank Aaron. No, no. Hank Aaron. No, no, no. No, no, no. It's not Babe Ruth or Hank Aaron. Create database if not exists. No one's answered yet. No, no one knows baseball trivia around here except for you. Oh. Okay. They can just look it up. They can just look it up. Well, then what fun is that? Mm. So cluster info async. Yeah, this looks like the right thing. So I want to I want to run the tests that he had. The uh, is his first name's Ralph. The answer is his first name's Ralph. Okay. Couchbase database creator test. Play for the Pirates. Play for the Pirates. He retired when he was 32 years old and ended his career with 369 home runs. Stubbornness and irritability seem to run in the family. <laughs> yep. So. The answer is Ralph Kiner. Ralph Tenner? Ralph Kiner, okay. Okay, I'm going to do an easy no, no. one. Uh, so how about you go and check on lunch? Because i got to get this finished so I can get lunch done soon. Okay. Your mom is home, okay? Yeah. Thanks for stopping in, Matthew. You're welcome. Okay. All right, so I uh, want to make sure these tests pass. World Series isn't available all over the world. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, uh, the World Baseball Classic should be available all over the world. That's coming up in 2021, I believe, is the next one. And uh, I believe uh, baseball's coming back to the Olympics soon. I think that's also the case. I don't know when, but uh, we'll, see some, we'll see some baseball in the world. Um, okay.
What's what's the test here? It is on, on configuring. Let's see, functional test. It looks like he's. I don't know if he's actually changed any of the tests. Just some of the setup code. So I don't know. Yep, it's all a bad joke. What the World Series? You better not. You best not be calling the World Series a bad joke. More proper football here in Europe. Well, of course, much much more popular out there. Although I did see something recently. There used to be something called the Baseball World Cup. Uh, and uh, the first one, uh, the first Baseball World Cup was in like 1938. And Great Britain won the first Baseball World Cup. Now this was, Baseball World Cup was only open to amateur players, not professional back then. So that, that was really interesting to me. I found that was, there, there's some history of baseball in Great Britain. And there are, uh, there are some teams of the Americas that are, well, outside of the Americas and East Asia, of course, uh, that are, are pretty pretty good uh, baseball followings. But uh, yeah, world, the World Series of Baseball was kind of a play on the World's Fair. That's where the name came from at the time. And, you know, the world. But the players, the best players from all the world come to the major leagues. And, uh, you know, Japan and Korea, um, and uh, some of the Chinese teams have really good baseball leagues out there. It's just, it's not that terribly, you know, it's, it's a much lower tier sport in, like, uh, in Europe and uh, uh, in, um, in most of Asia and most of Africa. Although South Africa, there's some baseball interest there. And there, there's, uh, you know, some of the colonies, some of the European colonies uh, have some, uh, some Caribbean islands where baseball is very popular, so... I would say it's a world sport, but the World Series is not something that uh, Europe or most of Asia and Africa is really into. So we got some, so we got some failing tests here, which I, you know uh, I don't know if uh, well, we got some passing tests. So I don't know if uh, if Brent actually intended to any of these tests to actually run. Let's see what happens over here in in the actual cluster. See if anything showed up. The only sort of baseball trivia I follow nowadays involves things like Curse of the Colonel. I don't know what the Curse of the Colonel is, but I, I, I do know that there's like the uh, the Billy Goat Curse and the uh, Curse of the Bambino, which have both been broken, I believe, recently. Maybe not the Billy Goat Curse. I don't know. Curse of the Colonel refers to an urban legend regarding a reputed curse placed on the Japanese Kansai-based Hanshin Tigers baseball team by deceased KFC founder and mascot Colonel Harlan... <laughs> what? Colonel Sanders put a curse on a baseball team in Japan? That is awesome. So if you, if you, know, like, if you know anything about Japanese culture, like KFC is kind of a weird cultural phenomenon in Japan. It's like... Uh, you know, it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like American food, right? In Japan, um, and it's kind of like uh, the place you go for like your Christmas dinner, if I'm not mistaken. You get you get some KFC for Christmas dinner in Japan. So KFC is a big deal in Japan, but uh, this is interesting. The Curse of the Colonel. I have not heard of this one. The uh, the Han Hanshin. I hope I'm saying that right. Hanshin Tigers uh, <laughs> are cursed. That's, that is hilarious. I'm going to have to look that up. So I want to see if actually anything... Okay, so look at this. It actually has created some buckets here. Uh, on the... Uh, whoa. Buckets that I can't, I can't actually get into. That's weird. I can't actually, like... What is with these buckets? That's weird. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to have to leave a comment here and just to see kind of... For heaven's sake. Oh, oh, you are. I'm so I'm going to give him a thumbs up here. So it uh, uh, looks like the implementation is working. Uh, although not all the tests are passing. Not sure if you meant for them to be passing yet. Also, I noticed something strange. Uh, the buckets created by the test show up in Couchbase. 
uh, with missing documents slash statistics statistics links Let's see screenshot uh, any any idea why that would be uh, again I want to say thank you thank you Brant for the PR and we already gave him a thumbs up so I want to get a screenshot of this a little bit Okay, I'm going to just get a screenshot of this, and we're going to copy that to clipboard, and we're going to bring it up in paint. Uh oh, I'm dropping frames. I think your mom's probably home watching streaming, isn't she? No, she's not. She's not? She's right there. All right. Lunch, you mean. So I don't know why this is. Hey, uh, Matthew, uh, Coral was talking about this thing called the Curse of the Colonel. It's uh, this team in Japan, the, the Hanshin Tigers, you know, in the Japanese league. That, you know, you've heard of the thing like Curse of the Bambino and the Billy Goat Curse. This is a similar curse placed on this Japanese team, the Hanshin Tigers, by Colonel Sanders from KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken. No, I've never heard of you know, it. You've, you've seen the commercial with Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders? Yeah. Colonel Sanders from Kentucky Fried Chicken. He's the guy in the weird outfit and the beard. He's, he's the guy you see, the cartoon you see on the signs. That's Colonel Sanders. Dave Thomas? No, that's Wendy's. Uh, what? What restaurant is this? Uh, what, what are we even talking about? Uh, he's talking about the curse of the Colonel. So here. Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders from what restaurant? This guy. From KFC? Nothing? Uh, nothing? <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, this one. Have you seen this before? Yes, yes, that's Colonel yes, Sanders right yes, there. Yes, yeah. yes. So that's, a, that, that's based on a real guy. Okay? Yeah. And apparently, I haven't read any more about this, he cursed a Japanese baseball team. Yeah. And so they have, uh, I don't know what the curse means. They've not been able to win a championship or something like that. But what has he, do? what has he done? I, I don't know. We'll have to look into it some <laughs> more. That's some pretty wild stuff. You get cursed by the chicken mascot. Goodness. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, I wanted to get the screenshot over here. The why is even wilder, so we're gonna have to look into this. Why? Yeah, why would he? Why would the Colonel Sanders curse a Japanese baseball team? Maybe they didn't. Uh, it happened after they won in '85. Okay, I assume they won the Japanese equivalent of the Japanese World Series. Okay, let's see. What in the world? Oh my goodness. What? That is some weird stuff. So after the, they won in 1985, this Japanese yeah. team, uh, and they yelled the players' names, each player's name, with every name a fan who looked like that team member would jump off a bridge into a canal, into so, like a river, okay? To celebrate, all right? Okay. Now, uh, they had an MVP on that team who was named Randy Bass. You heard of Randy Bass? He's a Caucasian player, so he's not Japanese, but he's playing in the, in the Japanese leagues, yeah. okay? And they couldn't find anyone who was Caucasian, who was a white person, okay? So they, they grabbed a statue of Colonel Sanders instead and uh, tossed it in, off the bridge. Hi. <laughs> okay. And now my daughter's joined us as well. Hi. <laughs> I want to we're completely off the rails here now. What are you playing? Uh, I'm not playing anything. I'm, what are you I'm, doing? This is part of my job. What are you doing? I'm trying to save the screenshots so I can... It's four minutes past noon. You're done. Yeah, I know. I know. I, I, uh, issue 13 screenshot. I'm trying to get this issue commented on so I can close out the stream for the day. Can you draw something? <laughs> can I draw something? I, I suppose I could draw something. But, KFC. <laughs> yes, I know, KFC. <laughs> we are way off the rails here. Let me get a fish. Mommy, Curse, cursed baseball chicken is your job now. <laughs> what? Cursed baseball chicken? <laughs> it's my job. Uh, all right, how do we put a picture the in here? Cursed baseball chicken. Insert, add a link. Stop hitting my chair. Uh, how, uh, attached files by dragging and dropping or selecting them. Okay. 
Put it in here. Okay, there we go. I am the one right now. Give me your headphones. Okay, there we go. Give me your headphones. Okay. I am the worker now. Okay, so we only got through a few of those pull requests. Uh, Coral says, lunch is served over here. I'll leave you to one wrap up. Yes, lunch is being served upstairs as well for me, so I got to get going. So uh, this is my daughter. Say hi. Hi. Emma says hi. I get a cheesy hot dog and chicken Emma. salsa. <laughs> okay. She's placing her food order, I guess. Anyway, thank you for joining me, everybody. I appreciate you bearing with me through all the distractions. We got some stuff done today. Uh, thank you very much, Brant and Calvin, for the pull request. Thanks for joining Coral. And thanks for all the, uh, thanks for all the chat, Dev lead and the follows, uh, Parallel Cobra. Uh, geez, we had so much today. Uh, who else? Parallel Cobra, Ahendro or Agendro. Um, thanks for all the subs, everybody. The follows, recent events. I just want to make sure I don't miss anybody. And we might do a quick raid here while while we're at it. Uh, uh, See, so thanks for stopping in, Mini Wheats. Uh, even though you have no idea what's going on, thank you for stopping in and chatting. And everybody else, thank you for coming in and, and hanging out today. Let's see, we got Code Rush, we got Code Phobia that are both on today. So I think we're going to do a raid of.